everybody, Chef Mary Nolan here. I am going to make one of my favorite sauces and that is a peanut sauce. There is something that is so richly satisfying about it. Um, I don't think I've ever met anyone who doesn't love it. So I'm actually gonna make a double batch. I'm gonna use half of it to make a rotisserie, chicken, ramen, veggie salad for my family for dinner tonight. And then I'm gonna bring some to a friend that just had a baby. So I, if I would, if I was not taking this to someone else, I would still make a double batch and keep it in my refrigerator because it is so good. You will see why. So to start, I need a cup of smooth peanut butter. What do I do if I only have chunky peanut butter? You might ask yourself or me. And I would say use it because it's going to go in the food processor anyway. It's going to break up some of those big chunks. And even if it doesn't, I mean, it's just crunchy, peanutty deliciousness. Um, but I prefer to use smooth. If you only have chunky, use chunky. I do think that the not natural variety works a little better in this. Um, the other stuff tends to separate and then your sauce also has the potential to separate. Uh, so I would stick with the Skippy or the Jif or something like that to make this. I think you'll have a better result. Okay, so one cup of peanut butter. I actually sprayed my measuring cup with a little pan to see if it comes out easier. I don't normally think to do that, but I thought, let's try, let's see. You know, like one of those tips you would see, like to make measuring easier, spray it with cooking spray. I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty clean. And maybe I would do it again. Maybe if I was thinking about it. Okay, so one cup of peanut butter. And then I'm going to add two thirds of a cup of soy sauce. This is low sodium. Use what you have. All right, and then to that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sesame oil. This is toasted sesame oil, like smells delicious already, like something I wanna eat, um, but too much of it can be overpowering. So two tablespoons of that. Okay, next, rice vinegar. Rice vinegar adds delicious punch to really anything you add it to. I'm gonna add a quarter cup. And this is unseasoned, so it doesn't have salt or sugar added to it. If you have rice vinegar where you read the ingredient list and it says salt and sugar, that's great, use it. Scale back a little bit on the soy sauce and the agave um, to compensate for that addition in your vinegar. All in all, it's still gonna be delicious and I'm gonna show you another trick if you want to make it a little less salty or a little less sweet at the end. Okay, uh, next, sambal. You could use really any kind of chili paste that you have, um, and you can adjust this based on how spicy you like things. So since I am making this for someone that just had a baby and has small children, I'm gonna add two tablespoons, which I know some of you might be thinking, that still seems like a lot, but this is a lot of sauce, and I think the heat really adds something delicious. So if you really love spice, you could double that. Okay. Next is agave. You could use honey. You could use my old pal maple syrup, although that's kind of expensive to put in a sauce like this, but you know, it's what you have. Um, and if you're out of all of that and you don't have agave, you could also just use a few, I would use maybe two tablespoons of sugar um, and then taste it and see what you think. But for this recipe, I'm gonna use a quarter cup agave since I'm doubling it. And I love agave syrup. It's very versatile. It's not terribly expensive. I use it to make cocktails a lot. All right, and then I just need to add my garlic and ginger. So for the garlic, since it's going into the food processor, you only need to peel it. You don't need to, oops, you don't need to worry about mincing it or anything like that. A lot of stuff going on here. So I'm just gonna give this a little whack with my knife. That seemed like a bad idea as I was doing it. I might go back to my rubber mallet. I'll show you on the next one what I would probably recommend. I'm always afraid I'm going like, to slide my hand off when I do something like that. Okay. Rubber, ma rubber mallet is my favorite for garlic. You just give it a little tap and see how it just pops right out. You don't like smash it too much, just enough that the skin just comes off. Like so. Pop that in. Okay. And then our final ingredient, aside from the water, which I'm going to show you in a second, is ginger. My best tip for ginger is I buy it in bulk and then I keep it in the freezer. So this bag just came out of the freezer. I section it into pieces like this before I freeze it so that it's easy to just grab one. 
And that way you always have ginger, fresh ginger, when you need it. And it's actually a little easier, I think, to peel when it's been frozen. So I have my knob that's been sitting on the countertop for just a few minutes. So it's defrosted enough that I can slice these little side pieces off and it's gonna make it a little easier to peel. And you don't have to be like, I don't know. It's gonna go in the food processor. So I would take as much skin as you can get off, but don't like stress about little tiny, tiny bits. You can also use a spoon to peel ginger. That works very well. But I cut those little side knobs off because they make peeling it harder. So if they're big enough, I'll peel those too. But this way it's just easier to get your knob. See, like that's the kind of stuff that like, I wouldn't stress about it. I would just go over it and then that's gonna go in my food processor and it's gonna be A-okay. Okay, so this, I am actually just gonna cut into a few rough chunks because it's gonna make processing it easier. And if it's still too hard to do that since it was in the freezer, just give it a few minutes. It defrosts really quickly. So I'm gonna throw this in there. Put my lid on. Okay, so I added a little bit of, that was warm water. That's why I had it in the kettle. A little bit of warm water as it was mixing because it helps loosen it into the consistency that you would want it for whatever you're making. The water is really important and I also use splashes of water when I'm assembling the salad, which I'll show you later, uh, because it helps, the noodles absorb a lot of it. So if your sauce is too thick, it ends up being like a big pile of glue. Um, so water helps keep everything nice and loose in your noodle salad and the texture that makes it easier for eating and just like in general, not too heavy. So like if you look at the consistency of the sauce, it's not super thick, which is what I want. I don't want it gloppy. I don't want it to be the texture of peanut butter. I want it to be something that will easily coat the noodles. So it looks good. Now I have to taste it. Make sure it tastes good, although I have no doubt. But then this is when if you used rice vinegar that was seasoned and you weren't sure if it was going to be too salty or too sweet, you could taste it. Mm. It's got a lot of flavor. Like it's, mm, like makes your mouth go, oh my gosh, that's so good. But it's definitely going to need more water as I'm assembling the noodle salad. So I just keep that in mind. It's like very sharply flavored, delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in a jar until I am ready to make my salad. I'm going to be cooking a little bit of ramen and then I'm going to toss the noodles with the peanut sauce with a little rotisserie chicken and some salad and eat it for lunch. So you can use whatever noodles you want. Um, you can use regular ramen. This is millet and brown rice ramen that I got it no other than Costco. And you don't want to overcook them because they will continue to cook as you're tossing them with the hot water and the peanut sauce. So I'm making two chunks of ramen because I'm gonna be not only making one for myself, but a friend. And if there's a little leftover, even better because the stuff tastes so good, people can't get enough of it. So my water is boiling. I put in two chunks of this ramen. The water is lightly salted. I did not salt it as heavily as I would if I was cooking spaghetti or pasta or something like that because the sauce is so flavorful and the noodles are really going to absorb it um quite a bit and so there's there's a lot a lot of flavor going on so i don't need to salt it quite as heavily um but we'll come back to this in four minutes when those noodles are about done and in the meantime i'm going to get my veggies ready for the salad um so you always use whatever you have that's my mantra you shouldn't have to run you know to the store to get too many things hopefully you have some of this on hand at home um lettuce from my spinner where i always have washed lettuce ready to go I'm just gonna chop this a little bit. Normally I tear lettuce, but I like to thinly slice it for this dish so that it's similar in size to the noodles. Like I try and keep everything thin. This is also great with kale. If you have kale or any leafy green really, but a little bit of lettuce. I have a cucumber that I've already peeled that I'm just gonna dice up here um, because cucumber and peanut sauce like peas and carrots no pun intended because the carrot is next and for the carrot i'm going to use my mandolin 
which is one of my favorite kitchen tools. But I recommend with some caution because people frequently cut themselves with it because it cuts things really quickly and people all of a sudden are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then they're not paying attention to what they're doing. So a mandolin is great, but it's also really dangerous. So um, always keep your eyes down on the mandolin when you're using it. I have the julienne blade in and I have a carrot. And so I'm just gonna slice through this carrot with that julienne blade in, but you never wanna get so that you're close to your fingers. So when I get to the top of the carrot and it gets harder to get through, that's when I stop. Like I'm not gonna sacrifice a knuckle for this little bit of carrot. I just cut the top off and then eat it. And I don't cut the top off until I'm done because it's almost like a little handle. So you want as much space there as possible when you are running it through your mandolin. So I have my carrot. And then another great use for the mandolin is slicing something like cabbage. Um, so this is purple cabbage. I've already washed it. I usually have a chunk of cabbage in the refrigerator that I add to salads and stuff like that. So you can see how it's just thinly slicing. But see, this is where people are like, oh, it's so fast, it's so fast. And then they're not paying attention how close they're getting to their hands or their fingers. So cautiously cut with a mandolin if you're going to get one. And if you're going to get one, this is my favorite kind. Uh, a little red onion. You could also use scallion something like that. You could leave the onion out all together. And then a little bit of cilantro. The cilantro really adds a nice brightness to this dish. And when I am cutting cilantro or chopping cilantro rather, I never remove the tender stems. So there are woody stems, which these don't, the woody stems are a little bit farther down. Those have already been cut off. Um, but then these I would consider tender stems and I don't take the leaves off of the stems. I chop the whole thing because there's a lot of flavor in these stems. Um, so I really like to include them. So when I get down here to the stems, I'm going to cut a little bit of a finer chop. So they're a little smaller and I'm just going to throw them in with the salad and they're delicious, flavorful. Don't waste them. I also like the texture overall of the cilantro better when they have, when there's a stem attached, it's a little crunchier. So that's how I want my cilantro to look. And then I have some peanuts. I'm gonna chop those up to garnish the whole thing. Okay, so I'm gonna check on my ramen. As you can see, it's coming apart. You always wanna stir noodles or any starch at the start of cooking, halfway through if you remember. And they are just about done. Okay, so at this point, I am going to reserve some of my pasta water. Uh, so I use a liquid measure and normally I just scoop right into the boiling water. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you could use a ladle, but I'm just going to take some of the water and this is going to help me finish my noodles. So stick with me. I'll show you how and what I mean. So I'm going to strain these and then I'm going to put them back in the pot and I'm going to toss them in the peanut sauce in the pot. Okay, so I have my cooked noodles that are still hot, ouch. <laughs> and then my peanut sauce. This is the peanut sauce that I've made and I've already eaten quite a bit of it. It's so good. So this is three quarters of a cup that I have that I'm gonna add to this. And then I am going to add a splash of my cooking water and I'm gonna stir. And the cooking water is gonna help loosen everything up and really get those noodles coated so they don't stick together, they're gonna absorb that sauce. So I know it looks a little wet now, but they're going to absorb that peanut sauce and not just be gloppy, but be the perfect texture. Okay, so then I'm gonna divide these between my two bowls. And the great thing about noodles and peanut sauce is, among other things, it tastes delicious hot. It tastes delicious cold. It tastes delicious at room temperature. Like it really is so good all of the time and everyone loves it. Like I have yet to meet a person who's like, oh, that peanut sauce, no thanks. Everyone can't get enough and puts it on everything. So I have a little left in my pot that I'm gonna save for later. Like I said, refrigerated, it's gonna be your best snack tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to assemble my salad on top of here. So next is gonna be the chicken. I like things that have temperature differentiation, so I'm gonna put cold rotisserie chicken on top of the hot noodles. If you wanna heat up the chicken, 
go for it. Um, but it's really what you like. So this is a rotisserie chicken that I've already taken apart. Um, they're really handy when you need cooked chicken. Um, so I buy them every so often for uses just like this. Or if you have a roast chicken left over, or if you have a chicken breast that you want to cook, or a chicken thigh. Thighs are a little juicier. Um, but this is a little bit of the chicken breast that I am just going to put right on top. And it's important that you layer flavors. So I am going to make this little salad to go on top and I'm gonna to toss that with my house vinaigrette that I use all the time and talk about constantly. Um, because it's nice because the peanut sauce is rich and a little sweet and salty, whereas the vinaigrette for the salad is more of a vinegar, you know, a little, it's a different texture, a different flavor profile. It has that sharp vinegary flavor. Okay, so. I am going to toss this separately, so separately from this stuff. So I have my lettuce, my cabbage, my cilantro, my carrots, all those yummy stems that are full of flavor, my cucumbers, and red onion. And then a little bit of the dressing. Let's give it a shake before I add it in. This is an old hot sauce bottle. I like to repurpose bottles and then it makes it easier to pour. So a little bit of that. Toss it around. I'm a big fan of dressing or sauce being mixed into something rather than just sitting on top. Okay, and then I'm gonna pile it high on here. Another herb that's really good in here is mint, if you happen to have any mint. Complements the flavor of the peanut sauce really well. The cucumbers go to the bottom because they're heavier. So you don't want one person to have all cucumbers. Okay, and finally the peanuts. I do give them a rough chop for garnish so they're not full. Again, the garnish is reinforcing a flavor that's in the dish. And in this case, it is that lovely, lovely peanut sauce. Okay, I cannot wait to dig in and take a bite of this. Like, it really is my favorite lunch. A little bit of the peanuts, the noodles, the chicken, and all those crisp vegetables. It's like perfect.